Hi, my name is Itlali Ramirez and I'm the team lead for Team 24083. My name is Jonah Olson. My name is Harrison Wood. My name is Isaac Peters. And we're environmental engineers designing the expansion of the Rainbow Valley Water Reclamation System. The Rainbow Valley Water Reclamation Facility is in need of an expansion to meet the demands of an expanding local population and improve work quality for operators on site. The plant has a current capacity of 0.75 million gallons per day, and the City of Goodyear wants to expand the capacity to 3 million gallons per day. The plant currently struggles with maintenance of major unit ops because there is no redundancy, which means they cannot take any unit ops offline for service. The design proposal for this expansion must compare three different technologies and provide a recommended expansion proposal that treats wastewater effluent to government and local standards, as well as provides redundancy and odor control. The design should also consider that the plant must remain operational during the upgrade of the facility as influent from the surrounding communities are not linked to any other water treatment facilities. The decision matrix was essential in evaluating each treatment train proposal. The criteria for analysis can be seen in the leftmost column, starting with area consumption, which is calculated from preliminary sizing of treatment technologies and necessary additional structures. It is the sum of the surface area consumed, which was modeled using CAD software. The construction costs are preliminary costing of concrete and rebar demand. Constituent removal is the average percent removal of BOD, total suspended solids, and total nitrogen. And the power consumption is the yearly cost of power consumption operations, including pumping and aeration. As seen by the decision matrix, the membrane bioreactor received the largest score at 11.9 and was selected for the design proposal. Here is an aerial view of the proposed site layout for the membrane bioreactor treatment train. The site layout shows new and upgraded equipment in red, current equipment that will be out of service in blue, and general wastewater process flow arrows in yellow. Two parallel treatment trains were established to provide the plant with redundancy, with each being rated to treat 1.5 million gallons per day, or half of the total plant's max flow rate. The site fence line was extended to the east to provide additional space for added unit ops. Walking through the process flow, wastewater influent is first received and then pumped via the influent pump station to headworks, where coarse drum screens and vortex grit chambers remove large debris and solids. The existing secondary clarifier on site was retrofitted to become an equalization basin. The equalization basin reduces flow rate variability, which will in turn improve treatment process efficiency. Next, fine drum screens remove remaining solids to help protect equipment and maximize performance of following processes. For secondary treatment, wastewater is first treated by anoxic and aerobic reactors before being sent to the membrane bioreactor. The membrane bioreactor effectively removes solids, nutrients, organics, and pathogens. In the final step, wastewater is sent to a disinfection basin where it is dosed with sodium hypochlorite for chlorination. It is then dosed with sodium bisulfite for dechlorination to ensure that no harmful chlorine residuals are being released into the environment. The treated effluent is then pumped off-site for irrigation reuse. For sludge processing, sludge from secondary treatment is dewatered and then sent to an anaerobic digester to achieve Class B biosolids quality. Odor control was implemented through the addition of covers as well as foul air treatment using a biofilter. An additional administration building was added to provide more offices, a lab, as well as a conference room for facility personnel. BioWin, a simulation software used to model and simulate wastewater treatment technologies, was used to model and optimize this design proposal. For the initial sizing of our equipment and their specification, we hand calculated general sizing using estimations of hydraulic and solid retention times for each process, as well as use literature values related to the dimension ratios of our basins. These sizes and specifications were placed in the software and removal rates were calculated based on various kinetic equations and algorithms used by the BioWin software. 
Based off these removal rates, we optimize sizing to improve removal efficiency. Additional recycle streams were added to the process to increase solid retention time and um, recovery, which improved anaerobic processes. The Bio one simulation effectively modeled screening, primary and secondary treatment, as well as anaerobic digestion. However, the Bio one simulation doesn't have a function to model chlorination. After optimizing our equipment sizing and recycle ratios, we were able to remove 88.4% of total nitrogen, 99.6% of BOD, and nearly 100% of TSS from the influent. One notable feature of our secondary treatment is the implementation of membrane bioreactors. Each treatment train features four membrane cassettes of hollow tube membranes, which are continuously aerated from below to mitigate membrane fouling. Through biological processes and filtration methods, MBR systems are able to remove organics, solids, nutrients, as well as some pathogens from the water. MBR systems are associated with smaller footprints, but higher pumping requirements than other secondary treatment options, and were determined to be the best choice by our alternatives analysis. Costs associated with this expansion are broken up into capital and operational and maintenance costs. In terms of capital costing, the preliminary treatment MBR filtration system and odor scrubber categories reflect the costs associated with purchasing and installing specialized equipment for those treatment categories. The labor machinery and materials categories reflect costs associated with land grading, digging, piping, and construction of concrete basins and administration buildings. When considering operational and maintenance expenses, the labor costs constitute the largest portion of this category, followed by power demand. Equipment maintenance costs are factored into our calculations based on data from facilities with similar treatment trains. Lastly, the membranes category reflects the average annual replacement costs for the MBR membranes that have an average lifetime of 14 years. Thank you for watching. We would like to thank each for their immeasurable support and guidance throughout the project process.